church. Good morning. How are we doing today? Good, good. I'm glad to hear that. I do want to say happy birthday to Stella because she just had celebrated her 75th birthday. So happy birthday, Stella. Yes, yes. Stella is like when I could talk about zeal, you're, you're going to be my inspiration for zeal because she's like, whoa. Yeah, I love it so much, yes. Okay, so today we are continuing in our series on the 12 powers of humankind. Uh, and these were not actually created by Charles, but Charles expounded on them. And uh, so I created a little tree. Now, I, I did try to fix the understanding part, but it's still Ozarkian understanding. And then Dee told me I had to order on there twice. And, you know, order is one of my things I'm working on this year, so clearly I needed extra order. <laughs> but the reason that I love this as a visual is because, you know, we believe that as we are really rooted and grounded in these 12 powers, as we activate them and bring them into um, a, a, a fuller experience in our daily lives, that that is when we are really stepping most into what we would call our greatest Christ power. Uh, you know, each of the each of the uh, powers are represented by a disciple. And, um, and so that's why we believe that, you know, as we activate these, we bring into that, you know, uh, biggest Christ expression. Now, we talked about understanding, and with understanding, we moved into that place where we understand the nature of God, the nature of ourselves, and the nature of others. And we see that as that we understand that we are good and we are loved. Uh, we also uh, moved into understanding is um, when we don't understand why a situation is occurring, um, how it is going to possibly turn out, that we move into that place of recognizing and remembering that no matter what is occurring, no matter how chaotic it may seem, no matter how painful it may be, that we can understand that God is standing under it. And that can give us some relief to remember that, that God is standing under it. Then we talked about the power of will. And in the power of will, we recognize our ability to align our will with the greater will of God, the greater will of good, the greater will of love, and how important it is for us to do that, and how important it is for us to kind of lean into, is there any resistance in me with that? Um, do I really trust that the will of God is always going to be for the greater good of myself and others. The other aspect of will is we talked about um, taking control of our personal will, recognizing that our personal will isn't really supposed to be what is leading us, but rather that we have the opportunity to re-educate our personal will to guide it to move us in the direction of our dreams and our desires, of our, our visions and our goals. So today we're going to talk <clears throat> about judgment. Here's a 12 power cape. Um, mostly though, in talking about judgment, we'll be talking actually about wisdom. Uh, but wisdom, discernment, judgment all fall under this uh, topic of judgment. So I want to uh, have a start with an affirmation. If we'll do this together. I claim wisdom now. I use wisdom to discern how to apply what I understand so I am being the best I can be. Okay, so James, the son of Zebedee, is the disciple who represents wisdom, and uh, it is located near our solar plexus, and it's actually the body brain. And how many times do we say, I have a gut feeling, I knew it in my gut. And that's what this is about, that knowing in your gut. Um, and the color that's related to it is the color of yellow. So the three disciples that were with Jesus on his most significant events of his life were Peter, who represents faith, and James and John, the sons of Zebedee, uh, the, their brothers, who represent love and wisdom. And what... What we're being told here is that the abilities, the faculties, the power of love and wisdom and faith need to be developed together. And that um, wisdom and love need to complement each other. Because what we recognize, and we've talked about this before, that when we use wisdom without love, it can be very cutting and cold. And when we use love without wisdom, um, it can get us into some interesting situations. Yes? 
yeah. So we, so we want to um, use these together. Now, wisdom is actually known as the highest form of spiritual knowing. This is such an important power that we're talking about today. It's the highest form of spiritual knowing. And it includes things like divine judgment and discernment and intuition and any activity of the mind that would come under the realm of pure knowing. And here's the thing, wisdom is not dependent on reasoning, on intellectual understanding, or on deduction. The idea with this power today is the recognition that we are to turn within. With wisdom, this is divine wisdom. This is tapping in to that greater realm. Now, it doesn't mean that we're not gonna use our, our reasoning faculties and our, our intellectual mind. In fact, how many of us, when we've had to make a decision, have gotten a piece of paper out, made two columns, pros and cons, yeah? And then maybe gone and talked to people about, you know, what do you think about this? But ultimately, where, where we wanna go, and so many times we forget this step. We just go to the intellectual mind and, and to that, and we make decisions based on that. We wanna take it in and we want to turn within, because in this greater realm of divine mind, infinite possibilities and potentialities exist, infinite. And so we may think from our reasoning mind, this is, this is the way, this is the only way, but when we turn within and we open ourselves up to that divine wisdom, we're probably going to be surprised at what shows up for us. How many times have we looked back on a situation and said, oh my gosh, I would have never figured it out to work out that way in my human mind. So we want to be open to the greater realm. Yes? Yes. yes. Okay. I figure that's why we're here today. Okay. We can't afford to let ourselves get caught up over and over again. And I promise you, we all do it in um, judging according to appearances in uh, making decisions based simply on intellectual knowledge. And this sentence, accepting limiting concepts constantly presented to us by the worldly viewpoint. And I'm gonna tell you, they're vast. Worldly concepts that are constantly being presented to us. But rather, and I love this, wisdom simply shines as the light from within that illumines the way and reveals whatever needs to be shown at a particular time. It is the voice of God within. And we can trust this. And we can trust that when we open ourselves up to it, it's going to present itself. And it's gonna present itself different ways. You know, sometimes it's gonna be an intuitive hit. Sometimes it's gonna be all of a sudden somebody calls you out of the blue or somebody just tells you about a job and you aren't even necessarily thinking about a different job, but then again, maybe somewhere in your mind you were as you realize that it's gonna show up in a multitude of ways. But what I wanna tell you is that when we turn within and we open ourselves up to it, it will present itself. It absolutely will. Ours is to be open to how it's gonna, how it's gonna present itself and show up. So what I wanna start with is um, from Reverend Eric Butterworth from the book um, New Thought for a New Millennium. Now, Reverend Eric Butterworth wrote this part in this book in 1998, and I shared last week that we don't wanna throw the baby out with the bathwater with the Bible, that um, so many times in unity or in new thought, there's this like almost like, let's not talk about the Bible, let's not talk about scripture, because a lot of us grew up more fundamentally, and we're kind of beaten down with the Bible. But I wanna tell you there's so much beautiful wisdom in the Bible. If we're willing, as Jesus said, to have eyes to see and to have ears to hear, it was never intended to be taken from a literal perspective. In fact, Charles Fillmore, our co-founder, he views the Bible as the evolution of humankind's consciousness from this old idea of separation into this idea of oneness and the power that's within each and every one of us. And if you're not familiar, Charles Fillmore has a book called The Metaphysical Bible Dictionary. And in this book, there are all the characters of the Bible, all the places of the Bible, some words that are in the Bible. And uh, he metaphyses them. He you know, puts them into a metaphysical interpretation. And it brings it in to something that is relevant to us um, today. And you know, the other, <laughs> I know, I made that up, didn't I, metaphys? Um, but I like it. Uh, 
<laughs> but when I, when I was sitting, I was sitting just really thinking about the Bible last night and that, I mean, there's a lot of stories in the Bible and I gotta tell you, there's a lot of crazy stories in the Bible. And, and yet, when I look at the diversity of life, there's a lot of diversity in life and there's a lot of crazy diversity in life. And that what we're gonna find is that a lot of these extreme stories they speak to us at different times in our life with different experiences. And they offer us generally hope that we're gonna be okay um, on the other side of it. Now, um, Eric Butterworth says that um, traditional Christianity tends to appeal to the emotions of people to really just study the scripture. And they do Bible classes encouraging people to um, to accept a literal interpretation of the scriptures and then to remember by rote the scriptures. How many of us can recite scriptures that we grew up with? And, but here's the thing he says, and this is what's relevant to me, is he says, um, as though that is what makes us wise. And I don't know about you, but I, I memorized those scriptures because I had to, but they didn't mean anything to me. I was too young for them to mean anything to me. I just knew to be a good girl, I needed to memorize these scriptures. But we wanna move deeper into what the Bible has um, to offer us. <clears throat> so he goes on to say that Jesus says in John, you search the scriptures because, I'm gonna say you think, that in them you have eternal life. And these are they which bear witness of me and you will come to me that you may have life. And so what Eric is, is telling us about this scripture is that the me referred to here is our own I amness. So it's like we search the scriptures hoping that we're gonna find our answers in the scriptures. When in reality what Jesus was saying was, you know, then you're gonna bear witness of your own I amness and you will come to yourself. You will come back to yourself. And when you come back to yourself and your own I amness and recognize that wisdom is within you, that is when you experience life. And and I'm not even talking about life in this physical realm, but when we talk about eternal life here, there's some school of thought that we should live in our physical bodies eternally. And for me, I'm like, nature doesn't really show us that. Um, but when we tap into that greater realm, what we recognize is, you know, and we all know this, but, but life is so much broader than this one stopover that eternal life is that that which was, is now, as me, will always be. And that's the eternal life aspect of it. But it's coming back to ourselves. And of course, this is the message you're gonna get over and over in unity, that it's an inside job. Um, so the Bible, he says, and its eternal message deal not just with God or not just with Jesus, but that it deals with the divinity that is within each and every one of us. And he said, this is the best kept secret of the ages. That forever, you know, how the Bible has been presented was that you're not divine. There's one man who is divine and you have to go through that man in order to have a relationship with God. And he's saying that the secret of the ages is the Bible has been all about our own divinity, that we are the divine beings. Um, and he says, its wisdom is not in the written words, but in the word of truth that they reveal. And to me, that's like everything about the Bible. It's not in the written words themselves, literally, but it's in the truth that these words reveal. Again, when we're willing to have eyes to see and ears to hear. So let me give you some examples of this. So Job went through all kinds of trials and tribulations. Um, we believe that Job was more than likely a fictitious character because the Bible is written as stories, as allegories, as parables, as, as metaphors. Um, but, and, and so there's stories to help empower us. And so when we look at Job, um, we see that he went from this, this path of self-righteousness to this path of enlightenment. And he did it by going through all of these crazy trials and tribulations. And the thing about Job is that even going through all these crazy trials and tribulations, he still held that faith. He still held that, that deep inner knowing that God was going to take care of him. And I would have to say that most of us have probably been through experiences in our lives where we felt like one thing after another after another kept happening and we're not understanding why. And in our humanness, 
it's easy to kind of give up and give up that faith and that hope and it's like, you know, but what this story shows us is that when we hold on, that ultimately we are gonna be okay, even if we're going through a lot of stuff, that, you know, we're gonna be okay. Another story in the Bible that's a great story is the story of the prodigal son. This story has a lot of different interpretations, but one of them that I love is that no matter how far astray we go, no matter how far away we get from our spirit, and do we all do it? <laughs> the moment that I go, oh, and I remember, wait a second here, I need, to, I need to come back here. The moment that I do that, everything that I need is right here for me. There's never any withholding. There's never any punishment. There's never any like, <clears throat> You've been out here in the realm of the world for, you know, five weeks now, so for five weeks I'm not going to impart to you my wisdom. There's never any of that. That the moment that we come back to ourselves, everything that we need is right here. And then the story of Jonah and the whale. Now, that has always been an interesting story to me because for me, I think God, in the, like divine mind, divine intelligence, doesn't need to create something like that that, seem, that is so illogical, that really and truly a man sat in the mouth of a whale for three days. I want you just to think about that. The whale evidently never chewed. <laughs> no acids going, no, you know, nothing, to, you know, I mean, he sat in the mouth of the whale. So it just stands to reason there's a deeper, a deeper meaning to this story. And one of those deeper meanings is that um, it shows us that we do have consequences to our actions and that we may spend a lot of time suffering through some of the storms in our lives, but there's an innate awareness in us that, that knowing that we, have, that we have kind of turned away from our inner source. And it's only by moving deeper into the storm, by surrendering to it, and that's hard. Because when a storm is happening, what we want to do is we want to hold on so that it can remain how it was. Because a storm usually means that something's falling apart, something's changing. And instead of surrendering into that, our tendency is to go, no, it's got to stay this way. Even if this way isn't really working for us, because it's what we know. But when we surrender into it, and we allow it, and we allow the pain, and we allow, you know, just what is happening, it's we become conscious that we do have choices now, that we have choices that we can make for how we're gonna, uh, you know, go from this place. I and mean, metaphysically, what this represents is that the big fish wasn't a punishment, that the big fish was a gift, and it gave that time to come apart. You know, so there's, there's just incredible wisdom. Those are just a couple of the stories. But incredible wisdom in scripture. Eric reminds us that the supreme power of the universe is not locked in the scriptures, whether the Judeo-Christian scriptures or the holy writings of the East, but that, and like this, this line right here is big for us. Revelation is not a special dispensation from God, rather a quality of divine mind and a faculty of the mind of every person. So hear that. Revelation is not just for a few people. That, that quality of divine mind is in us. And that every single one of us have the same capability, the same access as anybody else has to receive divine revelation. And he said, and, and you know, really, what God is revealing today is probably more important to us than what God revealed 2,000 years ago because that was for the people of that time, for their culture, for what was going on for them. And we need to be open to what God is revealing to each and every one of us today. And no, here's the thing I want you to know too is don't discount what revelation comes through you, what wisdom comes through you, what awareness comes through you. Don't let somebody dampen that for you because they don't agree with it. Because you know what, you guys? Peace does not mean that we're gonna agree with everybody. We're too diverse. Peace means that we can find a way to cohabitate together in our diversity. 
We can find a way to be together and to love each other and to allow the various expressions. So however that wisdom is imparted to you, whatever it is, trust it and, and share that wisdom because that wisdom is so important um, to be shared. Um, the, another way that I wanna talk for a couple minutes about judgment wisdom <clears throat> has to do with conclusion, I mean, I'm sorry, with, um, I'm gonna talk about judgment in particular here. Judgment being our ability to discern, to evaluate, and to make decisions. Um, judgment has two functions. One is to open ourselves up to the higher guidance. We talked about that, you know, what do I do? What's true? What is my next step? We open ourselves up to that. But another aspect of judgment is conclusion making. Does anybody here feel like they're pretty good conclusion makers? <laughs> I'm a pretty good conclusion maker. I can come up to my own conclusions pretty easily. <laughs> Here's the thing, is that we, we make our conclusions, we make our judgments, and we hand out decrees. And so we are the ultimate judge. And because of the limited information that I have in my mind, in my realm, I'm going to hand a decree if you're guilty or not guilty, if you're doing something good or bad, right or wrong, whatever. And, um, and it's something for us to become uh, absolutely aware of. But not only with people. Recognize that we do this on a daily basis. We may get up and decree, man, today's gonna be a stressful day. And it is. Or we could get up and decree, today is going to be a beautiful day, and I'm going to experience so much love, and it will be. In um, John 7, 24, it says, Do not judge by appearances, but judge with right judgment. Guess what? It's all appearance. Because we never have all the facts. By golly, I sometimes feel like I have all the facts. <laughs> Don't you sometimes? But we don't. It's all appearance. And again, to me, this is why we want to go to that inner place. You know, I know for myself, especially in today's climate, I, I, I have taken time to go in and say, please, reveal to me if I'm not seeing something right. Help me to know if I'm not seeing it right. Because it's so easy for us to stand on our thing of this is the only way to see it. And yet there's a lot of ways to see something. But taking this too, um, I may judge the kind of day I'm gonna have by the weather, and I, but my day has nothing to do with the weather, correct? My day has everything to do with the judgment that I just put on it. So we wanna be aware of that. We wanna be aware that, well, <clears throat> Um, is, is the glass half empty or is the glass half full? How am I navigating my life? How am I navigating every day? Am I looking at life that is in a way that's going to empower, um, empower me and empower people around me and uplift? Or am I living life in a way that is just keeping me down and keeping me low? And we're the only ones who can become aware of it and change it. One of my favorite scriptures, I share this a lot, you know, um, <laughs> That Christ may line the wake up, O sleeper, and rise. I was asleep a moment. Wake up, O sleeper, and rise. That Christ may shine the light on you. And I love that because it's like we have to wake up every day. We have to wake up after we wake up and make the choice to become aware. Am I, am I still in that old consciousness? Am I still decreeing what my life is based on what my life has been when I really want my life to be this way? And if I'm still decreeing based on what my life has been, it's never going to be that way because I'm not not even focused there. So I have to wake up and then I have to rise up to a different place and, and decree something different for myself and decree it over and over and over again. And that's where that Christ light is, um, is shown upon us. Okay. Uh, also judge not that you may not be judged um, <laughs> because with what measure you meet, it will be measured back to you again. Why? Because as you give, so you receive. So in the moment that I am judging something and I'm judging it in a toxic way, who's receiving it first? Me. <laughs> it's going to my mind, it's going to my body, it's going out into the universe. So we wanna make sure that we're just aware of that. And boy, that makes a big difference when you're in the awareness of that, because then you kinda wanna you know, keep your thoughts pretty pure as much as, as, much as you can. Um, I love this. It said, had we always maintained a clear, beautiful connection with spirit, through the Christ mind, 
Our faculty of wisdom would be pouring out to us a constant, limitless stream of divine insight and guidance. So I'm, I turn this into an affirmation for us. Let's do this together. I always maintain a clear, beautiful connection with spirit through the Christ mind, and my faculty of wisdom pours out to me a constant, limitless stream of divine insight and guidance. How does that feel? That feels really good, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, and if you can't get it written down, um, I, I'll give it to you. Um, and then the last thing that I want to look at with, um, with judgment is from the book Power Up Your Life by the Reverends Bill and Cher Holton and uh, Paul Hasselbeck. And the judgment that they're talking about this is um, when we need to go beyond the facts because sometimes facts get in the way of wisdom. And there was something that was created in the 1950s. It was called Junkologic. And it was a 1950s advertising principle that says you can give someone any two unrelated ideas and act like they're related and that person will make up a connection. So the very first thing that came to my mind was prescription drug commercials. While they're telling you everything that could possibly happen to you that can devastate your life, they're showing a video of just how wonderful life is because you're on this drug and everybody's happy and loving and skipping and, you know, and it really is. It's those two things, two contrasting ideas and, and, and we're in it without even knowing it. And so it's simply becoming aware that when, that helped me to have the wisdom, that when I hear conflicting information, <laughs> that I have the wisdom to discern the truth in that conflicting um, information. Um, so, and, and so let me bring it to just a, 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 how we can use that. Um, through this power, we have the wisdom to discern um, the difference between short-lived um, uh, satisfaction of revenge and long-term peace of forgiveness. You know, two contrasting ideas, but, you know, we have the power to be able to discern that. For, uh, with wisdom, we know the difference between worrying about a situation um, and, or taking it into um, that inner wisdom in ourselves and knowing knowing that solutions are going to be there. You know, with this wisdom, we can know the difference between playing the victim in our lives and um, moving into empowerment and integrity and authenticity. So it's, it's really just that matter of, um, of, of, of tapping into this power that we all have, and we do. And I, the main thing for me today, my friends, is I just want us to, to utilize it I want us to make this so important that this is the place that will go when decisions need to be made, that this is the place that will go when we're trying to figure out just how to be present to a situation. This is the place that will go because this is the place that is going to guide us to the greatest experience that we can possibly have. In James, um, it says, if any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. Lastly, um, let's say this together. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and wisdom to know the difference. And I want you to take a moment to really look at this. Grant me the serenity to accept what I cannot change. Because we want to fix it. We want to keep it like it was. We want to hold on. You know, so grant me the serenity to accept the peace, that inner peace that I can just accept. This is never going to be the same again. And I'm moving into a new norm. And then the courage to change the things I can. 
That's a big one. That's like that's a that's a big calling to me right now, because I just with everything that's going on in our country today and in our world today, that has been something that's been rising up so strong in me is having the courage to stand for what I believe to be right and what I believe to be true, and and doing what I can to create that change um, in my my family and my church community and the community and the, and in our country as a whole, and then the wisdom to know the difference. Whew. That's a big one, huh? Should I change it? Should I accept it? What should I do? Where do you go for the wisdom? Right here. We're going right in. So let's close with our affirmation one more time. I always maintain a clear, beautiful connection with spirit through the Christ mind, and my faculty of wisdom pours out to me a constant, limitless stream of divine insight and guidance. And let's say, thank you, God. Thank you, God. And so it is. And namaste.